Hey folks, it's Dr. Gersmar from Aspire Natural Health. Today I am going over one of the tests that we do use. So this is for the Dutch test uh, by Precision Analytics. So this is a hormone test, a urine hormone test. The nice thing about the Dutch, it has two nice things um, that are particularly good. One, it's comprehensive. So not only does it do estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, um, and a couple others like DHEA, uh, but it catches cortisol as well. So it's like doing a, 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 a salivary cortisol test that can tell us what your, your, what your cortisol rhythm looks like, so more about adrenal function, and it can catch uh, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone as well, plus some of their metabolites, which tells us how your body, not only how much of those hormones you have in your body, but how well your body is processing some of those hormones. So it provides a, a tremendous amount of information that a standard blood test or even the adrenal test, the salivary cortisol test don't accurately pick up. So it is a new and exciting test that out, that's out there, but a little bit confusing. So I wanted to go over it with everybody uh, so we can make sense of it. So you will get an envelope that looks like this. We go ahead and open it up and take a look inside. So the first thing we come upon is the order form. So on the front side here, you're going to see that we select the correct test. Most of the time we are doing the Dutch complete, which covers all of that. They're gonna ask you down here to go ahead and fill out any hormones that you might be taking. This test can be done both on hormones as well as not on any hormones. So if you are taking any, you wanna make sure that it's listed. Up here is your personal information, so you'll make sure that that's filled out. Um, and then they're gonna ask, if you're a woman, they're gonna ask you some more about your cycle so they can better understand your hormones. Now, over on this side, we're gonna see the sample collection. So this test does have four sample collections. We're gonna go over those in just a minute, where you put in the date and time that those were collected, okay? So basically, we'll make sure that most of the time the Dutch Complete is collected, any hormones that you're taking are listed, your personal information is here, and then the date and time that you collected the samples. Now, the back of the page, they're going to be asking you for some more information, asking, for example, about fatigue, whether you've been diagnosed with any conditions, uh, whether you're having any of these different symptoms. So that helps to correlate what's going on for you with the result of the test, all right? So the front-hand side is information about you and the test. The back-hand side is informa asking information about uh, any symptoms or anything that's going on for you. So we ask that before you send it in, you do have that filled out. Now, the other thing you're gonna find inside is another envelope containing everything that we're looking at. Now, Dutch has been pretty good here. As you can see, there are a lot of informational pieces. We'll cover some of them, but I do ask, take a look at the instructions, all right? So now, we have to break these this down essentially into men and postmenopausal women and women. So men in postmenopausal women, that is women who aren't having a cycle anymore, are pretty easy and straightforward. You just go ahead and collect the sample pretty much any day that you want. For women that are having cycles, uh, the test does need to be timed because your hormone levels are gonna fluctuate really significantly over the course of your cycle. They're aiming to hit the high points of your hormones, which are day 19, through 22 of a 28 day cycle. So if your cycle is 28 days long, that is from the first day you have your period to the first day of your next period, if that is 28 days, we wanna hit day 19 through 22. So if you have a regular, that is pretty much every month, 28 days, 28 days, 28 days, then from you can just go ahead and count from the first day of your period 19 to 22 days later, that's when you want to do this test. Now, if your cycle is irregular, or wait, just a moment, let me back up. If your cycle is shorter, regular, and shorter or longer than 28 days, then you're going to adjust that day 19 through 22. So if instead of 28 days, it's regularly 30 days, you would add two extra days, and so you'd be looking at day 21 through 24. If it were shorter, you'd subtract days so that you're keeping uh, in that window, all right? Now, if your cycle is irregular, this makes it more challenging. If some days, some periods, some months, it's longer or shorter, 
then uh, it's more difficult. There is no absolutely easy way here. If we want, one is you can sort of guess, and that can be okay, but if we're trying to be really precise, we need to get a sense of when uh, you are having, your, when your ovulation is and when that high point in your hormones is. So your two options are if you do some natural fertility planning, monitoring of your body, things like cervical mucus, or you're taking basal body temperatures, that can give you a clue when your ovulation is, and you can track six to eight days out from when you ovulated, okay? That would be that day 19 through 22 on a 28 day cycle. Uh, the other piece that the most accurate way is you can go to the drugstore and you can get an ovulation kit and you can go ahead, it's just one you pee on, those ovulation kits each day in the morning when you get up, and it will show you when you ovulate and then six to eight days later, you would collect your samples. All right, so I know it's a little tricky for women with irregular cycles if you've had a hysterectomy, but you still have good ovarian function, so you still have those hormones, you're not on hormone replacement, or you're, uh, you've had an ablation, so you're not having periods, at all anymore. So your options are either to guess, uh, to do some tracking of things like basal body temperature, or to get an ovulation kit. All right, so we've covered for women who are having their cycles when we want to do this, um, and a couple of wrinkles there. Now, there are, again, listed here on the book, there uh, on this little uh, um, kit that they've got. They do list this, but we'll again, we'll go over them briefly here for you. So there are four samples. They are, you know, wake when you wake up, 10 minutes within waking, two hours after waking, so that would be number two. Number three is dinner time. Number four is bedtime. So once again, 10 minutes within waking, two hours after waking, dinner time, and bedtime are the four samples that you collect. Now, the example they use here is that you make dinner time actually the first one you collect. So if today I was going to go ahead and collect the samples. The first one I would collect would be at dinner time. The second one would be at bedtime. When I got up tomorrow morning, I would collect my third one. And two hours after that would be my fourth sample. Now they say you don't have to, you don't necessarily have to follow that order, but it is suggested. A few last things, they suggest no caffeine or you know, large fluid intake after lunch. If you're collecting your first sample after dinner, you'd watch caffeine or your fluid intake because if you dilute your urine too much by drinking a lot, then it's gonna be harder to find those hormones or the levels of those hormones in the urine are going to be lower because you have so much more urine, all right? Uh, last couple things, if you are taking hormones, you can do this test, but there are a couple, of, just a couple little wrinkles. So they're recommending to not take any oral, which means by mouth, estrogen, DHEA, or testosterone the day of or the night before the test. So no oral estrogen, DHEA, or testosterone the day, the day of and the night before the test. If you're taking any pregnenolone, they're recommending that you, uh, you know, stop taking it three days beforehand. Uh, the last thing is if you're doing sublingual, that is in the mouth, under the tongue hormones, it can get a little bit tricky. Um, they have a video on the website of it. I recommend, you know, follow up this video with that video. You can go to dutchtest.com, click on videos, and there'll be more instructional videos there. Uh, but you have to be a little careful if you're doing the sublingual hormones. All right, last but not least, so we've covered some of the instructions for menstruating and non-menstruating women. Uh, for men, we've covered when to do the tests, right? A little bit about hormones, again, more at dutchtest.com. Lastly, over here on this side, you're going to see the actual sample collection. So one of the nice things about the Dutch test is compared to some of these other really extensive hormone uh, panels, urinary hormone panels, is traditionally you have to collect all of your urine, often over a 24 hour period, so you end up with a nice big jug of urine, uh, which isn't the best, right? The neat thing about this is actually it's all about these little filter papers. So you can either pee directly on this or pee in a little container, 
dip this in and then you simply set it aside for 24 hours to dry and once it's dry you then send it off okay so the test collection is really really simple on those four appointed times when you wake up in the morning two hours later at dinner time and bedtime you simply pee on one of these the filter paper inside this attached little card here and on the back you put your name and the time that you collected it. Set it aside for 24 hours. Let all of them dry thoroughly. So you'll see there are, you have the different kits inside. Then once they're all dry, you go ahead and stick them in the plastic bag. You take the plastic bag and you put it inside the enclosed envelope along with the form that you filled out. All right, folks, a little bit complicated. There are a lot of pros to doing the Dutch test, which is why we're exploring and using it more and more. But again, a little bit complicated. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us and feel welcome to go over to the Dutch test website. They've put together some videos answering a lot of common questions. All right, folks, we're excited about the Dutch test. We think it has a lot to offer patients. So we're increasingly making it available to our patients. If you have any questions or concerns, again, you have two options. Go over to the Dutch website, dutchtest.com, or go ahead and give us a call or send us an email. I hope this video has been helpful for you. And until we talk again, take care.